Now that we know something about the architecture of the Cortex-M processors, let's start talking about the instruction set. The first instruction we'll consider is the move instruction, which is probably the simplest instruction. But before we dive into that, let's talk about the typical instruction format that you'll see in an, in an assembly language program. The first field of an instruction is always the opcode or the mnemonic which suggests to us the operation to be performed by the instruction and it's usually three or four characters. You should know that the same operation can come in an instruction format with either two or three op operands. So for a given operation such as an addition we may see both a two operand form and a three operand form. If an instruction re actually requires two operands, such as addition, and it's written in the two operand form, then the destination register is also one of the operands. So if we were to add two operands using the two operand form of the add instruction, we would add the destination register to the second operand and put the result back into the destination register. Almost all instructions will have the destination register as the first operand. This is not a standard way of writing assembly language code for all processors, but it's how it's done for the ARM processors. The first operand will be the destination register. That's the register that gets modified by the instruction. The last operand which would be the second operand for a two operand instruction or the third operand for a three operand instruction is considered a flexible operand and by that we mean that it can have several forms the two most common forms for the flexible operand will be either to specify another register or to provide a small fixed constant that can be used in the instruction should keep in mind that any instruction will ultimately be encoded as a binary value which means that the text string that we humans look at or write down to specify an instruction ultimately has to get converted to a binary form that's stored in the program memory for the ARM processors those encodings can be either 16 or 32 bits complex instructions particularly the three operand forms of an instruction will probably require a 32-bit encoding whereas simpler instructions and instructions using the two op op operand encoding may only need 16 bits and generally we'll prefer to have 16-bit encodings because it uses less program space and those instructions will be easier to fetch from memory so here's the first example of a move instruction this is a simple instruction that we might use to get a constant value into a register so again the first part of the instruction is the opcode or the mnemonic the MOV opcode tells us this is a move instruction the first operand is the destination so now we want to move something into register 0 the second operand is in this case a constant value and in particular we call this an immediate value or an immediate operand because the value of the operand the value of the constant is actually embedded into the instruction encoding itself so as soon as the processor has decoded the instruction it has the operand value immediately there now as far as syntax is concerned we will often use the hash symbol or the octothorpe to explicitly indicate that an operand is an immediate value but that's not strictly required by the GNU assembler to indicate that a constant is written as a hexadecimal value we prefix the constant with a 0x and if you don't see a prefix before a constant if the first character in a constant is a digit 1 through 9 then you know that that constant is a decimal constant it's only the hexadecimal constants that begin with 0x so when we execute that instruction the value stored in register 0 is the full 32-bit value equivalent to the value of the constant specified 
So the immediate instructions, the immediate operand, is very valuable for putting small constants into registers because we can't use all of the bits in the encoding, only a few of them. We can't put very large values into registers this way, usually. Usually any value up to 256 will be acceptable as an immediate value. Um, there are situations though where values greater than that, greater than 256, can be used. And here's one example of that. Suppose we want to load the decimal value 2560 into a register. Now it looks like that's sort of a, an odd large number, but it turns out that the binary value the, or the hexadecimal value, you can, you can see the pattern in either case, is simply a small constant, the constant A or decimal 10, multiplied by 256 or shifted to the left by 8 bits. And it turns out that any small constant, less than 256, that's shifted to the left by some multiple of 8 um, is acceptable as an immediate value. And there are other combinations of patterns of bits that are acceptable. It's probably not reasonable to expect that you'll remember all of those special cases. What we'll normally do is just specify an immediate value and see if the assembler complains about it. Sometimes the assembler will do something clever, or you may do it yourself, using an instruction called the move not instruction. The move not instruction again takes a small immediate value, but instead of loading that value itself into the destination register, what we actually get is the ones complement, or the bitwise inverse of that immediate value. So the immediate value specified to the instruction was a small constant, with a binary value 0, 1, 0, 0. The value that actually got loaded into the register had all ones except for that bottom nibble, the bottom four bits, which had the form 1, 0, 1, 1. So what we got in the register was the ones complement, the inverse of that immediate value. Well, what if we want to load some arbitrary 32-bit value into a register? We can do that using a sequence of two special move instructions. The first one is the move W or move wide instruction. This is a full 32-bit encoding move instruction that allows for a 16-bit immediate value. So this particular instruction only takes an immediate value and it moves the bottom moves the immediate value into the bottom of the destination register. So we'll get that immediate value into the bottom half of R3 and the top half of, half of R3 is at the same time set to zero, cleared. That's half the problem. We've got half of our 32-bit constant into a register. To finish the job we use an instruction called the move T instruction or the move top instruction. The move top instruction again takes a full 16-bit immediate value, but now that immediate value will be loaded into the top half of the specified destination register, and the bottom half will be unchanged. So the result of executing that instruction gives us a value of FEEDC0DE -E in register 3. And we've loaded this arbitrary 32-bit constant into register 3. We'll see later on that there's another useful way to get an arbitrary 32-bit constant into a register, but this is the way we can do it using a move instruction. Well, for completeness, we should mention the generic register-to-register -register move, which simply copy, copies the value from one register, say register 1, into another register, say register 4. Now, you wouldn't think that this would be particularly useful, that we would need to copy a value from, from one register to another register. But it turns out that there are many situations where we need to make a copy of a, re of a value so that we can save its original value while we're doing calculations. Or we may just simply need to put it in a particular register for some particular reason, such as passing a parameter to a subroutine. So, what are the key points that we've talked about today? 
Well, keep in mind that most instructions in the Cortex-M instruction set specify the destination as the first operand, and we'll be careful to mention the special cases where that's not true. Remember that an immediate value or an immediate operand is a small constant that is encoded within the instruction encoding itself. So it's buried within the ones and zeros that specify the instruction and as soon as the processor has decoded the instruction it has that immediate constant value available. Keep in mind that sometimes we'll use the hash symbol to prefix an immediate operand but this isn't always required for the GNU assembler. And then finally remember that whenever you see a prefix of 0x for a value it tells you that that value is written as a hexadecimal value, base 16, rather than a decimal value. That's the move instruction for the Cortex-M. Thanks for watching.